What is bathroom scale trauma? Bathroom scale trauma is a term used to describe the emotional reaction people have when they step on the scale and see that their weight has gone up. This can be a devastating blow to someone who is trying to lose weight. It is also described as a psychological disorder that is caused by a person being constantly weighed on a bathroom scale. It can be caused by the person's weight fluctuating and those fluctuations triggering anxiety or depression. However, this measuring method has been found to be inaccurate as it does not take into account the body fat percentage, which can be significant for some people. As such, many people who use scales find themselves with a lot of anxiety when they step onto them. It is quite common for people to be anxious about stepping on the scale. The anxiety that arises from this experience ranges from worry about weight gain to a fear of the scale itself. The causes of bathroom scale trauma are many and varied, but some of the most common reasons include Body image issues Irrational fear of what the number will say A history with scales that have been inaccurate or misleading Normalized, inaccurate messaging from the diet industry, food industry, beauty industry and social media, even with some of our medical, fitness and health professionals who only focus on physical weight versus the whole health spectrum that includes emotional, mental, social and physical health. The effects of bathroom scale trauma on your mental health are not just physical, but also emotional and psychological. We should be aware that our mental health depends on how we view ourselves and how others view us. We need to make sure that we are not too harsh on ourselves. Losing weight is not easy. It takes a lot of hard work and dedication to get to the desired goal. However, it can be made even harder by the body's natural response to weight loss, which leads to the dreaded bathroom scale trauma. Remember bathroom scales are not the best way to measure your weight. In fact, they are one of the worst ways to measure. They can be very misleading. For example, they don't account for muscle mass and water weight, which can make it seem like you lost more weight than you actually did. It is recommended that you ditch the scale and instead use a tape measure or something else to track your progress. Try tracking your progress in additional ways than just tracking your weight, body fat, and BMI. These numbers don't have to be totally ignored, but these numbers are not always the best way to measure success. Just having weight loss goals are often a difficult cycle to break. We all know that the key to success is making small changes and not giving up after a few days due to what we may perceive as failure. With this in mind, the following is a compiled list of ways you can break the cycle of bathroom scales and just having weight loss goals. 1. Know your body. Before you get on the scale know your body. How does it react to certain foods? Does my weight fluctuate multiple times during the day? What foods do I positively react to? What foods do I negatively react to? What makes me retain water? Does exercise impact me? Did I lose a lot of weight the week prior? Am I still losing inches? Will weighing myself right now trigger something that will not serve me? 2. Find a time that works with your body and your mind. The only time you should weigh yourself is if you know that doing so will not traumatize you or affect your self-worth. The scale or the number on that scale cannot determine your self-worth. 3. Be honest with yourself. It's best to be honest with yourself and your situation. Has your behavior moved you towards your health goals or away from them? Do you let the scale determine your mood or determine your well-being? Do you need to look to your other progress indicators instead of the scale? Do you beat yourself up if that number is not what you want it to be? How are you really talking to yourself before getting on the scale, while you are on the scale, and when you get off the scale? 4. Always have a plan in place. It's important to always have a plan in place when getting off the scale. What is the next loving step? What is this data telling me about my body, not my self-worth? 6. Read and research more about positive self-talk. How does this apply to your level of bathroom scale trauma? It may seem like a daunting task, but reading about this can help you understand what is best for you and your goals. Have a friend or family member who is already committed to a healthy lifestyle and has a healthy relationship with the bathroom scale and ask them questions about what they do to stay positive. How do they stay on track when things go not as planned? The scale is a powerful tool. It can be used for good or bad. The thing is don't let the scale determine your mood, decisions about your life and how you interact with your family and friends. Do not let it control you and force you to decide when to eat, what to eat, and if you should eat at all. Weighing yourself can be a painful and stressful experience. It can lead to a lot of emotional distress, especially if the number on the scale is higher than what you expected. 
It is important to note that the scale does not show a person's true weight. It does not tell if you are healthy or not. It cannot tell you if you are a good person or not. The scale has been known to be inaccurate and can cause people to become obsessed with the numbers on it, leading them to do unhealthy things in order to reach a specific number. Is that you? If you are using the scale as a way of measuring your weight and you are sensing you might have some unresolved trauma around it, it may be best to only weigh yourself once a week or once a month. Now go make a list of all the other ways to show progress and success other than just the number on the scale. The reality is the bathroom scale is a liar, the BMI index is outdated. Check out this video and see why that is and what else you can do to monitor your overall health success. Music